if you want to help people, you know, that take someone out that you feel is unwell, probably the pub is the last place to be going, you know. But that's not on Vixta. I'm not blaming Vixta. I'm just saying we should have gone somewhere else, I suppose. Maybe a ca cafe or something. Well, that's not his fault. I'm not blaming him at all. Yeah, I've admitted I need help before Corin. Um, and I had the alcohol, this team phoning me, but I ignored it because at the time, you know, I just lost caring. And I still have lost caring. I st you know, something that's just overnight, oh, okay, I suddenly care now. You know what I mean? But I know that I definitely have to go and get sorted. I was really nervous meeting Wixter, yeah, because a lot of things were going through my head. And I don't really want to say stay on here, on here because I don't want to be horrible to Wixter, do you know what I mean? But so much was going through my head. And, you know, Wixter, he was, he was nice, and he was nice today, you know, and, you know, he took me lunch. It was lovely. And I really do want to have a friendship with Wixter. Rickster wanted the drama. Well, we both wanted content. It wasn't just Rickster, both of us. We wanted, we did it for the clout. But obviously it went wrong, because I got drunk. <laughs> yeah, I got my handbag. Yeah, I get really paranoid. As You know, I just, I had this, I told you before though, wasn't it? I don't know if you went on here, what I said was, it's like, I always feel fearful. I've just got this constant fear. And it's all the time, and that's sometimes when I go to sleep, I've got this, you know when you go down the dip, you know, like a roller coaster, that feeling in your stomach, that nervy feeling. And I, I feel that every day. And then when things are going good, and everything's happy I start thinking negative thinking no this is going too happy then I start thinking oh my god why am I coughing do I have lung cancer do you get what I'm saying even though that's self-anxiety you know I'm not taking the piss out of people that have cancer because you know my dad had lung cancer but then I start getting paranoid and then I, see, I it's like I feel better having negative thoughts or something it's weird do you know what I mean I just can't just be happy because I don't know when things are going too right, too right, it's like that's when my things kick in, I think. You know, then I start thinking other things that are negative about my health. Do you know what I'm saying? But I've never been violent. I'm not a violent person. I've never been a violent drunk, you know, I say drunk, you know. Do you know what I mean? But I'm mouthy, yeah, me verbally, yes, but not physically. You know, I don't, I've never done that. Yeah, self destruction, and that's what I think Ems is what Ems is doing as well. I know I don't know if she's got an addiction. You might say she has, but we're not doctors, right? Looks like she does, but I'm not going to judge her and say she has because I don't know. But it's good that she's going to get help because she you knows she's still young. You know, she's got a whole life ahead of her still. The brain is so powerful; it's the most powerful organ in your brain. And, mm. you know how sometimes, I, you know, with, can I say, can we put trigger warning, right? This is a trigger warning. I do apologize. Like, I wait for a trigger warning. Can we just put trigger warning in the comments, please? Because if you don't want to hear this, please leave the live. Because I don't want to trigger anybody. Like, um, um, can we put a trigger warning? Can you hear me, guys? Oh, thank you. Like, when I have real bad anxiety, that's when the SH comes in, yeah? It's because I need to take my anxiety away from here and focus on something else. And that's the SH, the anxiety. That's for me. And I know everyone is different, but I haven't done that for ages, like, you know. But, um, yeah. I remember I was on the phone to the NHS once because my anxiety, this was before, was it before TikTok, my anxiety was so, so bad. And um, I was on the phone, I didn't know what to do really. I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I phoned NHS to get advice or, I don't know, medication or something like that. And 
I was doing it while on the phone to him because all my anxiety was through the roof. It, I can't, you can't, I can't explain the fear. It's like a, it's like a fear. Yeah. A, huge, a really bad fear that I get. And that's when I start thinking negative. Like when I say negative, like, you know, um, you know, stuff. Yeah. A dread. Yeah. It's like a dread. Yeah. And I get that when I'm asleep. Like a dread feeling. Yeah. Yeah, you understand, you know, the first, this is how I was first diagnosed with BPD, right? I feel I've got PTSD, though, because that's why I need to go to the, my back mental health. That's because I just, because of the nightmares I get as well, and, the, you know, when I, like, I don't think I'm flashbacks and stuff like that, right? But, you know, when, um, like, um, when it first started, I was at my friend's house, trigger warning again, guys. Oh, I might get bananaed. I'd go into my other account if I get bananaed here. Trigger warning, guys, leave the live, please, if you don't want to hear this, because it is a huge trigger. But I nearly, you know what, and my friend walked in at the time, and that's how everything just spiraled downwards. And that's when I was diagnosed with BPD. Um, and then I, I, I found Samaritans and the doctors and my doctor's amazing and then he put me through to the crisis team and then had the crisis team visiting me every day um i didn't find them really good but with samaritans made me laugh and they said you know what they said why don't you go and have a cup of tea i'm like what the fuck <laughs> a cup of tea you know what i mean <laughs> it was weird <laughs> and she could say go for a walk i think it was like two in the bloody morning what time was it it was like late in the morning or something Yeah. I'll tell you, it was a big trigger. I hate that word trigger. I've always said I hate the word trigger. But I do get people's triggers because I get triggered with certain things myself. Do you know what I mean? I like watch myself back. That's triggering. You know, but uh, that word should be abolished. But what I was going to say is, um, I forgot to say now, the trigger bit, the, um, I'm just waffling here, waffling on. Um, like, what I was going to say, I forgot. Um, oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. You know what really triggered me, and maybe people can relate to it, is Caroline Fleck. That really triggered me a lot, if you want to use the word triggered. Yeah. I don't know if that did with anyone else, but it did with me. Do you think some things, you know, when Gracie, she was on um, Miss Red's Live saying, you know, how certain things are glorified. That's quite true, isn't it? Like, SH is kind of looks, it's like glorified in some ways. It's quite sick, really, isn't it? I do agree with that. It's like people, everyone's got a BBD. It's like the fashion. She was pushed over the edge. Who was pushed over the edge? Are you talking about Gracie? Oh, no, you're talking about Karen Flex. Sorry, see, I forgot what we were bloody talking about. Yeah. But now I knew about her mental health, the severity in her, her mental health. See, I agree with CPS by pursuing the case because of her history. You know what I mean? And like you say, you know, if it was the other way around, he'd be crucified if it was a man that did it to her. So why is it okay for her to do it to him? But then at the same time, if you, we knew, people knew the severity of her mental health, obviously things would be different, right? And myself, I wouldn't have the opinions that I had, I had back then either, if I knew that either. You know? But that, 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 that was a huge trigger. And I used to think about it quite a lot. Yeah. That's, that's desperate, that's desperation what she did there, you know. 
And I go, go look, go look at what, what's happening? Defend this woman. What woman? Defend what woman? Karen Fleck. She doesn't help herself, so she abused him. You turn on Karen Fleck. Well, this is what I'm saying. That's why I agreed with the CPS to continue the case. But obviously, if we all knew the severity of her mental health, we would have said, I would have different opinions you know what I mean and that was sad because she was what 40 years old wasn't she she had you know she was very pretty and do you think because she couldn't see him either could she that must have been quite scary though and having to go to court yeah trial by media and she was beautiful yeah but you got to remember, though, um, Coco, even though she's not here anymore, and, you know, that's sad, really sad, you know, she did have a history, apparently. You know, and I just don't think people can blame the CPS when they had enough evidence against her. I know, okay, yeah, that is a shocker. But at least it's good, though, she's got... Um, it's treated treat early, you know, that's what I'm saying. And she'll get the best treatment. So young, she, how old is she, 42? Oh, sad man. Yeah. Robin Williams, you know what? Robin Williams was really sh a shocker because people assume because you're a comedian that you're funny all the time. You know, and a lot of people, when you look at Only Fools and Horses, the guy that, what's his name? Something Sullivan, forgot his first name, Sullivan, that wrote Only Fools and Horses. He wasn't a funny man. He wasn't. But yet, pen to paper, he was hilarious. You know, and like Robin Williams, you know, he's a, is it Robbie? Sorry, Robert, Rob, no, Robin, Robin Williams. You know, he had that Parkinson's, didn't he? And obviously, he didn't want to live through that, and he suffered depression. And um, that was really, really sad. That really broke my heart that, you know, you've got this comedian that, you know, that that suffered with depression and, yeah. He had a severe type of Parkinson's, didn't he? Or was it something to do, um, dementia or something as well, wasn't it? Or was it called, I don't know, I can cause that or something like that. Manic depression. Manic depression is really bad, you know, manic depression. Manic depression, is that when um, you go up and down? Is that like... Let me find out, what is manic depression? The symptoms of manic depression. I think that's bipolar. Right, yeah, well, I'm just thinking, what is manic depression? Manic depression. Uh, let me just see. Does anyone here suffer with it? Up and down with bipolar. Oh, wait a minute. Is manic depression the same as bipolar then? Oh, okay. So manic it comes up with bipolar. So it's the same, right? Oh, right. I didn't know that. Bipolar. I didn't know manic depression was the same as bipolar. Well, it's nothing like it, no. But when I've gone into manic depression symptoms, it's come up with bipolar. That bipolar, bipolar, do you know what I mean? When you say no, it's not the same. What shall I type in then? Mania, what's... A manic episode is a period of abnormality, extreme changes in mood. Oh my God, I get that. You probably notice uh, one minute I'm like really calm and it's like oh, oh. if you go in there and she's it would uh, so mania so ma mania is the same manic isn't it is mania the same as manic BPD get manic manic yeah mania is a condition which you display an overtop level of activity or energy oh my god that does sound like me. Mood or behavior, this elevation must be a change from the usual self 
and be noticeable to others. Symptoms include feelings of invincibility. Feelings of, what does invincibility mean? Lack of sleep. I, recently, yeah, I do have lack of sleep, but I blame that for TikTok. I think if I went on TikTok, I'd probably have a good sleep. Racing thoughts and ideas. Mm, I don't really have racing thoughts and ideas, no. Rapid talking. No, I don't rapid talk, do I? No. And ha no, this is definitely not me. Rapid talking, because I don't talk really fast. And having false beliefs or perceptions. I don't have false beliefs. That's definitely not me then, anyway. You know, when you Google things, everything's you, and you Google nothing, shit, that's me. And then you Google something, shit, that's me too. <laughs> mocking people who do suffer. Who's mocking people that suffer? Who's mocking it? I mean, can I not Google something and just see if that's kind of related to me? Can I not do that? That's not mocking. Wow, I don't understand. You are definitely BPD, not bipolar. No, I don't think I've got bipolar because I don't really have racing thoughts. I don't talk. I talk fast, yes, but I'm just a fast talker at times. But I don't talk like a, someone with bipolar talks. What's NPD? I don't know. What does NPD mean, guys? Symptoms overlap with BPD, bipolar, ADHD, autism, and ADD. Is it? You know, I've always said this, and I'll say it again. BPD is a very, very debatable, debatable debatable condition because some doctors some people believe that now i'm not saying it's not doesn't exist but some people believe, believe that bpd is like under why would you give someone a condition of bpd when it's understandable where people feel that they've, they've had a trauma or neglect whatever they've had in their life or abuse whatever yeah it's not quite understandable that they're going to feel the way they feel like happy angry sad there's an understandable for what you've gone through to have those feelings and um, so why would you give somebody a mental health condition? Do you know what I mean? So people do believe, there are a lot of people that believe BPD don't exist or shouldn't exist. And I kind of get that as well. You know, so when you've had a trauma, of course you're going to feel the way you do, right? But does that mean you have mental health? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, they shouldn't label us. Yeah, people don't like to be labelled. But so I do get that, Coco. Because listen, I know some people like to have that diagnosis, yeah, because they feel like they're not going crazy or whatever, yeah. That's fine. But there are some people that don't want to be labelled with it, and that would rather go and with life thinking that doesn't exist. And I get that too. We have a discussion about saying important. It's not Nick. It's not Nikki G. I mean, people can get in the box if they want to talk about their stories or whatever. You know what I mean? That's fine. I do have my boxes open. I know I didn't want to talk to people before, but I, I'm, I'm quite talkative now. Yeah. So a real condition that is based on more than that. Well, yes, there may be, but I, well, I do understand why there are people. Listen, do you want me to show you how it, what they say about BPD it being debatable? Because I do get it that when people don't want to be labelled. Like when I got labelled with a BPD, right, I felt sick. I felt like a patient and I felt like I wasn't well. Yeah, 